Hello, patrons. Thank you so much for joining us yet again for a lovely little bonus patch. Now, I wanted to pick up from when we were talking in the episode about how you prepare for guests to come around. Now, I had Dion around the other night and we were watching the football and, uh, and we were upstairs in my bedroom. Now, upstairs, front or downstairs to get outside. And Dion got up as he was leaving and, and I got up as well to um, go let him out. And he said, no, no, don't worry about letting me out. I'll, I'll get out myself. And I thought that was quite strange, Dion, because for me, traditionally, you walk your guest out. You say goodbye to them at the front door. You were completely fine leaving of your own accord. You'd find your own way. Yeah, I think it was that. Um, th- thank you for Christian for, for reminding me of that. Um, I think it was <laughs> the fact that um, I uh, sometimes I feel like it's unnecessary. It was just a pop in. I didn't think you needed to see me out. But Josh, Josh is the the seer out of guy. Josh is good at it. I appreciate when he does it. But I think it was just the fact that you were in your room. You were settled. You would have, we would have opened the door for a little bit longer. You didn't, Cold you, air would have rushed in. <laughs> you didn't even let me try to see you out. How did know. you know how good I could have been? <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't think, I think that it's not always necessary. Josh, do you think it's always necessary to see someone out? Well, I think the context is very important. So you mentioned there that Christian was comfortable in his room. I, I would have said if the footy was still going or something and you had to leave early, it'd be like, no, nah, mate, you stay and watch it. Don't worry about it. So if, yeah. if you're interrupting something potentially, I think yeah. it's fine to be like, no, no, you stay there. It's fine, mate. Don't worry about it. But if there's nothing in particular going on and you've just both been hanging out together um, and there's not like an urgent thing that someone's doing, I think just accept it. Just accept yeah. the walkout, Dion. I think now I, I'd accept it, but I think it goes back to Christian. You were very vexed about um, saying goodbye to people. Many, vexed. many patches ago, <laughs> you were very vexed about saying goodbye to people and that you just wish with a phone call, you just hang up or just, or just, or just like the start of the phone call. Don't say hello. Just get straight into it. It's 100%. that kind of thing. It's chopping, it's chopping the ends. I didn't. And yeah. And I was glad that you used your incredibly sharp knife to chop <laughs> the ends of our interaction because it just, it just threw me off. Not that it was bad, okay, but I was prepared to walk you to the door. I think that letting someone kind of run amok in your house is strange. You, you weren't, you weren't, sh- I need to chauffeur you out. Cause what happens if you'd run into one of my housemates, they would have been quite surprised to see a random man. Walking oh around yeah, the- absolutely. Random very, man. very surprised to see that the person they saw earlier in the night, for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, but I- walking around by yourself. <laughs> making ghost around. noises. I love how you're saying running a muck and walking around. I literally would have left your room, gone down the stairs, gone into each of your housemates. No, obviously not gone <laughs> yeah. into their rooms. No, I just didn't think it was necessary, but I do. I love the, the, um, the idea of being able to see someone out. I think it's really nice. Josh, do you get it from your folks? Is that, is, uh, is that who role modeled it? Probably something like that, right? Like it's the polite thing to do and guests over at the house, that kind of thing. That was always a big deal of like the whole, oh, what do the neighbors think? That, that kind of thing of you got to be polite to guests and all that kind of stuff. I think it all sort of, what do you mean? What together. do the neighbors think? You know, yeah, like people the, say that. What would the neighbors? As in, the neighbors are watching you say goodbye yes. to your friends. Just air, air across the household, the neighbors are watching. So you there's better. something about the boomer generation that they were so concerned about neighbors looking outside of their windows. I don't because I never witnessed my parents looking outside the windows. You know what they were probably neighbors. doing? They were probably watching the the pies cooling on the windowsill. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. I'm trying to think which generation has the best relationship with their neighbors. Do you reckon boomers? <laughs> Do you reckon, ge- what, what are we? Are we Z or X or Y? What, what, what are we again? I'm pretty sure yeah. we're X. Or we're so, millennials. Millennials spans a lot more than people think. Oh yeah. Millennials is M though. So generation M. I don't really know, yeah. but, but I feel like my folks had a bad relationship with their neighbors. Just not a good, just not a great relationship. And yeah, I think we may have talked about it before where my next, when I move into a house one day, I will go over there with so many cups of sugar. It's going to be it's really, gonna be, yeah, it's going to be sweet beginnings and sweet. Ending. <laughs> I, I don't know, because I think then you dig a hole for yourself that you might not be able to escape from for a long time. Why? If you, if you like them, but they really like you, they, there's no escape, Dion. No, that, but Christian, what it is, it's the neighborhood community value. It's looking out for each other. Hey, I'm going on holiday. No worries. Yep. I'll look after the place yeah. and keep an eye on it. Yeah, we have, that's how I understand what being a neighbor is growing up with my family. It's a polite arm's length relationship. 
But you know what the problem is with it? I had a friend t- today call me and he said, hey, I'm at someone else's house and I need to do some work and I've got my a MacBook here, but I don't have my charger. And he was like, what do I do? Should I go to Apple? Because I know they've got a 14 day, day return policy. You can buy it and return it. <laughs> should I go to another store? Should I look up like JB Hi-Fi? Should I look up their policy and see a lot of nonchalant stuff when you go in and, and purchase a, a charger? But what, what really would have been great in that situation is for him to be able to go to his neighbor and go, hey, just checking if you've got a MacBook charger. But instead, we've got no relationship with the communities around us. At least I don't. I, I yeah. hate my neighbors. They all, <laughs> they all, st- they st- half of them stink. And a hundred percent, I know 50% of them stink and a hundred percent of them make too much noise. Hang on. When you say they stink, do you just mean that their cooking smells? No, no, no. The apartment next to me fucking stinks. They, they just reek. They, they, they leave the door open to go get um, stuff from their car and the waft just permeates the stairwell. I'm like, what are you doing in there? Clean your balls. It's awful. <laughs> I think a massive and it's a woman is- as well. <laughs> I think the biggest difference is apartment neighbors, generally terrible house neighbors, generally not a big issue. I really? think on the whole, but I think it's far more normal that a, a, a house neighbor arrangement is much more cordial. And I think it's largely a noise thing. There you've are benefits. Space. There are benefits to different types of neighbors. So like if you've got a seven year old neighbor, sometimes they can be amazing because they bring you over soup and goulash. I, I actually don't know if that happens. Do you have, have you, do you <laughs> well, have any no, like that? Yeah. One of our old places in Richmond, there used to be a guy who was across the road. I presume he was retired, but he was essentially a neighborhood watch and he would literally just sit out on his porch. I think his what? name was Brian and he would just watch watch the happenings of the street Hang on, and he would what? know when people were coming and going and all that kind of stuff. I'm very unfamiliar with this concept of neighborhood watch. Is it, is it simply a guy watching people? Oh, so the official neighborhood watch, it wasn't like an official thing. Just the idea of, yes, he's looking out for the street and he's, he knows he sees familiar people. He sees unfamiliar people. So if something was going on, he'd have a pretty good idea of, of what it was. So, so, so that, I don't know. That kind of makes it seem as though anyone that you see who is unfamiliar should immediately not be there. Yes. Because What do you mean? So you can't go for a walk in a different neighborhood? No, no. But the idea of like... <laughs> what, about, you said- what about your community's neighbor? The neighboring <laughs> community? <laughs> no, no. But normally, right, if it's a stranger, they're probably coming to see the person, right? So they're going into the house rather than some dodgy looking person who's scoping out a neighborhood. Aren't strangers always up to no good? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Actually, I, I visited another friend on the weekend and went and they live very close to their, uh, their grandmother. And I got out of the car. I, I kind of didn't remember that they lived so close to the grandmother. I got out of the car and the grandmother were just peeking like behind the curtain. It was so Aww. cute. And then saw me and then, put, and then pulled the curtain drawer. <laughs> and then came back so without cute. her top on. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to jump right back to the point we started on with Dion uh, being a guest. Um, one thing that happened a while ago, Dion, was you came over as a guest. You were offered a beer, which you accepted, which I'm yep. happy to do. Mm, but my go. problem was that <laughs> you left the beer about half full when uh, you left. I, I, Josh, That's a wh- waste of a beer. If I come over and you give me food and you feed me and I leave half of the food on the plate, it's not sounding great, is it? A quarter- <laughs> I reckon, I reckon a quarter of food on a plate is equivalent to half a beer. Is that a problem, Josh? Do you have to clean half, up your plate? A half a beer is so much because I would have yeah, had all of that beer. Yeah. That's and true. I would have rather you go, no, no, I'm not up for a full beer. I, and I would have gone, do you want me to pour you some of mine? I could have offered you that. And yeah. That's, that's interesting. What about if it was a juice, Josh? Uh, yeah. The, any, the type any, of any liquid. Anything other than water? That I can't, that I don't feel bad pouring. <laughs> water is the only liquid I'm totally comfortable pouring down a sink. Soda water? Yeah. Uh, not even I'm... then, because there's been work done on it. Yeah. Work there's bubbles. <laughs> Has there been work done on this water? <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just realized that I was like, yeah, anytime you're pouring milk down, juice down, coke down, anything like that, you're always like, oh, wasted. The morning after a party, when you're pouring like three quarter full beers, the number of beers that you just put down around a thing of spirits, you're like so much booze, just straight down the sink. Maybe we should have recycling. Just for- sinker Arden. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have recycling for um, un- undrunk drinks. Maybe there should be a separate bin. A separate bin. And Christian, what happens? No, Christian's nodding his head. He thinks it's a good idea. He's well, well, how's this? How's this sound? You put it into a bin that 
evaporates the liquid and really keeps like the alcohol. So because they'll have different boiling points. Yeah. And then you can reuse the alcohol. Hey, Josh, if that bin is half full of you and it's chucked out, are you still pissed? <laughs> <laughs> like I offered you. I offered you some alcohol, Dion, and you've left it half full. Would that would that be like a hundred percent alcohol? Is that what we'd be left with? With, uh, your magic, with your magic bin, Christian? No, no, no. no. <laughs> what does uh, it do? No, it wouldn't be a hundred percent alcohol. There'd, there'd be some residual stuff that also was in boiling off at the same uh, temperature as water. I think we have to be very careful with Christian's ideas because Christian, um, I know that someone on Instagram uh, tagged Patchwork in a in a link, um, and it was an idea that you had probably about ten, five or ten patches ago, which mm. was the idea of the extendable. Um, uh, yeah, wall outlet. Yeah, wall board. outlet. Oh, been done, yeah. mate. It's been done. It's been done in Iran. Have you been that- to Iran? <laughs> it sounds like you have recently, Christian. Uh, no comment. <laughs> uh, no, it just means that it's a good idea if it's already been done. Uh, no, it means you've trolled the internet and stolen it. Okay, thank you so much for listening, <laughs> patrons. Uh, it's always lovely to catch up with you. Uh, if you'd like to watch this bonus patch, you can head to YouTube. We're going to post it for you. We're trying to record them, be more diligent with that stuff. But again, thank you so much for your support. Dion, any final comments, Josh? Any final comments? Uh, no, not really. I'm just looking forward to having, uh, when I'm older, 20 different bins that I have to put out for bin night. <laughs>